Britain has fallen back in love with our great pubs and our beautiful beer. We don't have to go back far to remember scenes like these. Beer and pubs at the very heart of the nation's celebrations. Our breweries, now numbering over a thousand across the country, work their socks off to help get the party started. Pubs stayed open longer for the Diamond Jubilee as the extended bank holiday saw communities come together in a way we haven't seen since the mid-70s. Who can forget the highs and the inevitable lows of following our beloved footballers? We lined the streets in our millions to cheer the Olympic flame. And we toasted our medal success with over a hundred specially brewed beers. And that's just on the drink side. Do you know our pubs now serve over one billion meals every year? Clearly, the nation's taste for going to the pub, great pub grub and beer is as strong as ever. There is one thing that's standing in the way though, and that's money. And in these tough economic times, every penny really does matter. I'm Marverine Cole. I'm a journalist, award-winning beer writer and a beer sommelier. I've decided to find out more about these trends. Just what is it about our love for beer and pubs? How can we keep our pubs at the heart of the big society? And what can the Chancellor do to support the growth of one of our British manufacturing success stories? I've started my voyage of discovery where it all begins, through the barley fields of our beautiful countryside, to visit a brewery in the most English of seaside towns. Who says we don't make anything in this country anymore? Right here in Southwold on the Suffolk coast, Adnams has been brewing great beer for over 140 years, and it's one of the economic powerhouses of this rural economy. Andy Wood is chief executive of Adnams and he also leads the lobbying effort for jobs and investment across East Anglia. Andy, thanks very much for joining us. Just tell me, how many people do you employ locally? Well, locally we employ 420 people directly. We also have 70 pubs in the local area and if one conservatively estimates five jobs associated with each of those pubs, that's about 350 further jobs out in the field. That's a big economic impact and a big jobs impact and we are one of the largest employers in this local area. Across Suffolk and Norfolk we have a visitor economy of five billion pounds and it employs 74,000 people. It's an economic and employment giant and the pub has a critical role within all of that. And I think if the government are really serious about growth and jobs and the potential of the leisure industry, they should really think again around the duty escalator. The pub to most of us is a familiar place for, say, unwinding, catching up with friends, or simply watching the world go by over a pint. But for others who live in our rural communities, the local pub is somewhere they depend on for many of the day-to-day -day services you wouldn't expect to see behind these four walls. And there's a pub here in Kirkby Overblow in North Yorkshire that just happens to be one of the best examples of this. I'm here with Kate and David, the licensees of the Shoulder of Mutton. So guys, how important is the pub to the village? Uh, the pub's really important to the village. Um, and not only do we run the pub, but we've also opened a village shop in the Nout building um, next door. And that offers a range of services. Not only do we provide groceries and food ordering, but then we also take in parcels and um, sell tickets for events that go on in the village, at the church and the school. So it really draws the community together. Yeah, we have a fantastic pub which we're really proud of. Um, and it's been hard work but we're constantly evolving the offer. Um, our menu is constantly being updated. And with the addition of the shop, we're, you know, we're probably the, one of the biggest employers in the village. But it's not just rural communities where pubs matter to people. Charlotte Leslie MP is the Prime Minister's big society ambassador. 
Right, well, most of us live in towns and cities, and we live really busy lives, and it's very hard to get together and talk to each other, and pubs are where a lot of that happens. And if you're talking big society, um, quite apart from the fact that pubs raise over £120 million a year for our charities, um, it's where sports clubs congregate, and it's where people get together and discuss things. So a group of local parents in my constituency um, wanted to set up a new free school. And where was it that we had the first conversation and made our plans? It was over my local pub with a pint. Great pubs provide much needed employment too. Did you know over half of all pub jobs are taken by people under 25? Are you doing a training course? Susie Jackson is the director of the Hospitality Guild, the organisation aiming to raise skills levels across the industry. Pubs offer a fantastic opportunity for young people. They have diversified so much in the last few years that the skill set that they, they come into at an entry level and then learn over a period of time give them transferable skills that really do set them up in, in a career for life across the whole of hospitality. And it's just so important at a time when young people need these opportunities. From grain to glass, the wider supply chain adds further to the economy and to the Chancellor's coffers. Each pub contributes an average of £80,000 to the local economy. Every job in brewing creates one job in farming, one in distribution and 18 in pubs. So from the barley fields to the breweries to the pubs and bars of Britain, beer is great for British business. Bridget Simmons is the Chief Executive of the British Beer and Pub Association. Our message to the Chancellor is he needs to stop the beer duty escalator and these above inflation increases that we're having year on year. And that way it's a win-win for the Chancellor because we could create new jobs, about 2,000 in the next year, and we could invest more in both brewing and in pubs. Many other countries in Europe reduce VAT in, in industries like pubs, and we could do that here, and you could reduce VAT on both alcohol and food, and again, that would allow us to create new jobs next year. MP Andrew Griffiths has been leading the charge in the House of Commons for a reduction in beer tax and for more support for our pubs. I think it's because MPs see in their own constituencies the value and the importance of the pub. You know, they recognise that the pub is at the heart of the community. It's where people meet with friends and family. It's where community groups meet. It's where people go to watch sport and to play sport. And the government talk a lot about the big society. I think we recognise that the pub is at the heart of the big society and we recognise that actually beer is hugely important to the profitability and the future of the great British pub and that's why we're so determined to scrap the beer duty escalator. I think it's hugely unfair that in the UK we pay ten times more beer duty than German drinkers. That's hugely unfair. We just want some fairness and some parity in this system so that British pubs and British brewers, brewers can survive and make a living. It's what we all want. Pubs at the heart of our communities serving great food and great British beer, young people offered skills and job opportunities and small family farms and pub businesses enjoying more success. Let's hope the Chancellor gives us more reasons to celebrate by ending the beer duty escalator and helping to kick-start growth in this brilliant industry.